Now let's solve example 2. Express the force as a Cartesian vector. We are going to express the force F as a Cartesian vector. Now from this diagram, we have the magnitude of F to be 500 newtons. We have this angle, 60 degrees, and this happens to be the angle formed between F and then the X axis. So that is the angle alpha. And we also have the angle gamma, which is formed between F and then the Z axis. So we have the magnitude of F to be 500 newtons. We have alpha to be 60 degrees. We also have gamma to be 60 degrees. But we don't know the value of the angle beta. So to express this force as a Cartesian vector, we first of all need to find the angle beta. Then we can multiply the magnitude of F by the direction cosines. So that is exactly what we are going to do. Now when two of the coordinate direction angles are given, we can find the value of the third angle by using the equation cos squared alpha plus cos squared beta plus cos squared gamma equals 1. Now let's substitute the values of alpha and then gamma into this equation. So we have cos squared 60 plus cos squared beta plus cos squared 60 equals 1. Now let's simplify this to find the value of beta. Cos squared 60 is equal to 0 0.25. We have cos squared 60 also being 0 0.25 plus cos squared beta equals 1. Now when we add these two values, we have 0 0.5. Therefore, we can say that cos squared beta is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5. And then we have cos squared beta equals 0 0.5. So at this point, we are going to take the square root of both sides of the equation so that we have cos beta equals plus or minus the square root of 0 0.5. And that is equal to plus or minus 0 0.7071. So these are the values of cos beta. Now, judging from the diagram, you realize that in order to get to F, we need to move along the negative Y axis, the negative X axis, and the positive Z axis. Now, since we need to move along the negative Y axis, then it means that we need to consider the negative value of 0 0.7071. So, we disregard the positive value and consider the negative value. Therefore, we say that cos beta is equal to negative 0 0.7071. Now let's find the value of beta. So beta is equal to cos inverse of negative 0 0.7071 and that gives 135 degrees. So we have the value of the angle beta to be 135. 35 degrees. Now since we have the value of beta, we can find the direction cosines and multiply each by the magnitude of F. So we have alpha to be 60 degrees, we have beta to be 135 degrees, and then we have gamma also to be 60 degrees. So using the formula F equals F cos alpha i plus F cos beta j plus F cos gamma k, we can represent the force F as a Cartesian vector. So let's multiply the magnitude of F by the direction cosines. So we have F equals 500 cos 60. Now one important thing you need to take notice of is that in order to get to F, you need to move along the negative x-axis. So in that case, 
we need to negate the value of the magnitude of f so instead of 500 cos 60 we have negative 500 cos 60 simply because the force is directed along the negative x axis plus we have f to be 500 so 500 cos beta beta is 135 so 135 j notice that the force f is also directed along the negative y axis however we catered for the negative when we were finding the value of the angle beta so we are not going to negate the magnitude of the force because we've already catered for that in the calculation for the angle beta that is why we had the value of beta to be greater than 90 degrees plus 500 cos gamma we have gamma to be 60 degrees now the force is directed along the positive z axis so we have no issue here so let's simplify this so we have f equals negative 500 cos 60 is negative 250 so we have negative 250i and then 50 cos 135 gives negative 353.6 so we have negative 353.6 j plus 500 cos 60 gives 250 so we have 250 k so basically this is the cartesian vector representation of the force f now let's solve example 3 determine the coordinate direction angles of the force and represent the force as a cartesian vector so we are going to determine the coordinate direction angles alpha beta and gamma of the force and represent the force as a cartesian vector now from the diagram instead of giving the directional angles we are giving two special angles which are 30 degrees and 45 degrees respectively now we are going to use this to find the rectangular components of the force f so that we can represent this force as a cartesian vector then we move on to find the coordinate direction angles alpha beta and gamma now given these two special angles we said that we first of all need to find f prime and then fz now this is f prime and then f prime happens to be the resultant component vector of fy and then fx so that is f prime the resultant component vector of fy and then fx so this is fx this is fy and then we also have the rectangular component fz directed along the z axis so first of all we are going to find f prime and then fz then we can use f prime to find the values of fx and then fy so let's do that together so considering this triangle the angle between f prime and then fz is 90 degrees now we have this angle that is 30 degrees facing fz and we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse therefore if you want to find the value of fz then we have fz equals the hypotenuse which is f f sine 30 we have the value of f to be 75 so we have 75 sine 30 degrees and that is equal to 37.50 newtons notice that fz is directed along the negative z axis we have this to be the positive z axis and then this side to be the negative z axis therefore this becomes negative f sin 30 negative 75 sin 30 so we have fz to be negative 37.50 newtons now let's find the value of f prime we have this angle being adjacent to f prime therefore f prime is equal to f cos 30 degrees 
so that is equal to 75 cos 30 and we have our answer to be 64.95 so 64.95 newtons so this is the value of f prime now using this value we can find fx and then fy considering this triangle we have the angle between fy and then fx to be 90 degrees therefore if you want to find the value of fx this 45 degrees angle is facing fx therefore this becomes fx equals f prime sine 45 we have f prime to be 64.95 times sine 45 therefore we have fx to be equal to 45.93 newtons notice that fx is directed along the positive x axis so this becomes our final answer for fx now let's find the value of fy so since we have this to be f prime sine 45 then fy becomes f prime cos 45 degrees so this is equal to 64.95 cos 45 and that is equal to 45.93 newtons so this is the value of fy fy is also directed along the positive y axis therefore f can be expressed as a cartesian vector as we have the x component to be 45.93 i plus 45.93 g minus 37.50 k so basically this is the cartesian vector representation of the force f now let's move on as we find the coordinate direction angles So we had f to be 45.93i plus 45.93j minus 37.50k. Now to find the coordinate direction angles, first of all, let's find the magnitude of f. So the magnitude of f is equal to the square root of 45.93 square plus 45.93 square plus negative 37.50 square now this gives 75 newtons so this is the magnitude of f now the unit vector directed along f is given by uf equals f divided by the magnitude of f and we can express f in the cartesian vector form as fxi plus fyj plus fzk so we divide this all by the magnitude of f so that we have fx to be 45.93i divided by 75 plus 45.93j divided by 75 minus 37.50k divided by 75. 45.93 divided by 75 gives 0.61. Plus, we also have the same value here, so that is 0.6124j minus 37.50 divided by 75 gives 0.5. So we have negative 0.5k. So this is the unit vector directed along f. Now let's call this equation 1. Now we know that uf is given by cos alpha i plus 
cos beta j plus cos gamma k. So comparing the various terms of these two equations, we have cos alpha equals 0 0.6124. Therefore, alpha is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.6124. And that is equal to 52.24 degrees. We have cos beta also equal to 0 0.6124. We have beta also to be equal to cos inverse of this value. And that is also 52.24 degrees. Now to gamma. We have cos gamma equals negative 0.5. Therefore, we have gamma to be equal to cos inverse of negative 0 0.5 and that is equal to 120 degrees. So we have the values of the angles alpha, beta and then gamma.